Welcome back to another exciting chemistry lesson. In this lesson, we are going to look at evidence of electron and where they are located in an atoms. Well, first of all, when we expose atoms to electromagnetic radiation, which we have control of, okay, at a specific energy level that exceeds, okay, the binding energy, which is also used to represent ionization energy of that electron. Well, what's happening? Well, the electron is going to be ejected. So basically, the way it works is electron absorb those radiation in form of energy, and once they have enough energy, they will travel faster until they escape from an atoms. Now, this can be formulated into a formula. In this formula, we have the incoming radiation energy, which the electron is being exposed to and absorb those energy. Now. Of course, every single electron will have a specific binding energy or ionization energy that requires. Now, if that's the case, what about the leftover energy? Well, the leftover energy is converted into kinetic energy, which the electron will take with them. And the kinetic energy we can think of motion. Okay, so if that is the case, the electron will. Travel faster or slower depend where they are in an atoms. The closer the electron to the nucleus, the greater the attraction between the nucleus and the electron. So therefore, it goes slower. Where electron on the outside, right, it will be further away because there's little attraction. So that means it's gonna go faster. So look at this way: the greater the kinetic energy, the faster the ejected electron. Okay, again, kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and of course, the further the way. It is. It requires the less energy. So the remaining energy it is kinetic energy, and therefore it moves faster. That's a very challenging concept. Okay. So closer it is, the slower the ejected electron. The further away it is, the faster the ejected electron. So by looking at the speed of the ejected electron, we can determine how far it is away from the nucleus, and this is demonstrated on a Photoelectron spectra, also known as PES. Okay, and now let's look at this right here. We have this photoelectron spectrum, and here you can see the binding energy. Look what happened to the energy; it is decreasing as moving away from the origin. So, what does that tell you? This right here must be the closest, okay, to the nucleus. And here we have the relative number of electron, because if you notice the word relative. Is relative between peak, right? So if we look at this peak right here, this is about one third of this whole entire peak. Okay, as you can see right here, this is one third, this is one third. A lot of the spectrum shows the relationship between s electron and p electron. Well, we know in p has how many electron total? One, two, three. So six electron total, right? Where in s we have only two electron. So what does that tell you? In this case, if we look at this in terms of electron configuration, this must be one s two, this must be two s two, and this must be two p six. Notice how we start from the very beginning of hydrogen, right? And we keep going, and this must be what three s two, and this must be three p one two three four. So therefore, this must be. Four right there. You see how that works. That's why we use the term relative. And here we have the periodic table, just to show you. We have one s two, two s two, two p six, three s two, and three p four. And as you can see, these right here are the highest energy level. So they are the highest. Okay. So what does that tell you? Well, if that's the case, these are also valence electron as well. So. That's one way we can look at in terms of this graph. What else can we learn about this graph? Well, if this is the closest, right? This is also the slowest, okay? Or also, if that's the slowest, this one must also be the fastest. Or in terms of kinetic energy, this would be the highest kinetic energy, okay? And this would be the lowest kinetic energy. Okay, I'm gonna put Ke just in there, just in case. Ke right there. So we can learn so much by looking at the photoelectron spectrum. Okay, and of course we can also look at the binding energy. How each electron requires specific amount of energy 
to remove or eject it from an atom. Okay. Now let's do a practice problem. In this case, we have the photoelectron spectrum, and it tells you the binding energy. Okay, it gives you the binding energy, and it has the relative number. And using the periodic table again, we can write this as electron configuration: one s two, two s two, and two p six, three s two, and three p one. Well, this is two. This is a little bit half of it, right? So this is must be three p three. There you go. You see how that works? So by looking at this spectrum, can we identify the element? Yes. Let's look at this. 3p3, where is that? 3p3 right here. 3p123. So the answer is phosphorus. There you go. So phosphorus right there. And write out the full electron configuration of the spectrum. Oh, that's easy. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p3. If I want to look at the valence electron, these right here are the valence electron. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, and which one is the closest one to the nucleus? This one. Which one is the furthest one from the nucleus? This one right here. This two. Well, in this case, this one right here. 3p3. And which one would travel the fastest? This one. Which one would travel the slowest after ejected from the nucleus? This one right there. You see how that works? All this information can be identified or given to us on the spectrum. And of course, for the answer on the practice, we are going to use the caret symbol to represent the subscript. But let's move on to the next question. How many valence electrons does it have? So this is the highest energy level, 3. So from 3, there's 2 right here, there's 3 right there. So in this case, 2 plus 3 equal to what? 5. And therefore, the answer is 5. And that's again coming from 3s2 and 3p3. Okay, we add it together. An electron from which peak will have the greatest velocity after ejection? Well, the one that's furthest away, right? In this case, at peak number 2. There you go. And this one right here. And justify why there are five peaks. Okay, let's look at this. Well, there are, what, five of them? Five peaks. And we have the word bank right there because of the five, what? Sub-level. One, two, three, four, five. So in this case, we can look at in terms of sub-levels, okay? Peak at blank binder energy. So it should be binding energy or electron blank away from the nucleus. So peak at what? Peak at lower binding energy, which is right here at 2. Well, what? Will be further away, okay, from the nucleus or its nucleus. So, so that's how you use photoelectron as an evidence, but also as a way for us to look at the electron and where they are in an atom. And now let's go check our answer. Here I type everything in, okay? And notice how I use a carriage symbol to represent a superscript. And now let's check our answer. And there you go. And that is how you use photoelectron spectrum to learn about the properties of atoms, specifically the location of electrons in an atom. And we'll see you next time on another exciting chemistry lesson.